All right, this is another video from Melanie King. Ben Shapiro, that nigga so weird, bro. Anyway, the title of it is Ben Shapiro says feminist fem feminism ruin marriage. Which thank you so much for being here first and foremost and also He's probably right from the way it looks what it looked like. Hey. I'm not just doing a price thank you for standing up and protecting more. Absolutely. Obviously with the clap. in light of everything that's going on at the moment, we all believe rape and sexual assault are heinous crimes. We all want rape is behind bars. But I feel that in this climate, logic, evidence, and data are kind of being lost in translation. And also there's a very pervasive, you're with us or against us mentality that's really doing a lot more harm than good. So my question to you is, how can we best stand up for the importance of due process and the presumption of innocence, but also doing what we can to support survivors? Okay, so I think that uh, there's actually a Hey guys, it's your girl Melanie, and I came across this clip with Ben Shapiro um, and from a few years ago, and it's basically it's titled How Feminism Ruined Marriage. So it's interesting, I want to hear how you go from that question that she was asking about due process, and even though you know there are victims, and I think this was during the time of Me Too, or close to it, and how do you, you know, help victims, but also there needs to be due process, because we've, we've learned from so many cases that these evil women, Western women out here will make false accusations and think nothing of it. They have no problem with it. And it's interesting, even if you aren't religious or Christian or anything like that, um, I, I may I may go back at some point and read some scripture, especially in Proverbs. It talks about a woman like this who will who will, who will devour you and wipe your, her, your blood from her mouth and say, I did nothing. Even in those times. That's true. That's so true. They talk about like the promiscuous women too, like how they uh didn't see no uh fault in their ways and stuff. And it's crazy, like people don't believe the Bible and shit, but every day shit from that shit get truer and truer. Especially now when when you start looking at the book of Revelation and stuff, it's insane. It's crazy, bro. And like how like the two nations are starting that war and you got the whole stuff with uh Palestine and is is it Palestine and I forgot the other country, but uh y'all know what I'm talking about. Hell, I can't keep up with that shit, but I try not to keep up with it because the more you start looking at the politics and just what's going on in the world for real, for real, it gets super depressing. I'm trying so I do not want to be no no more depressed than I already have to be. <laughs> you know, biblically we talked about how women and their false accusations. If you look at um, Joseph and Potiphar's wife uh, in Genesis and how he was falsely accused of grape. I have to call it grape. I have to say grape. They can say it on the clip in a different way, but I have to say it that way of essay. And he was sent to prison. So this is a tale as old of time as sorry, there's something that dropped. This is a tale that's old as time where women use false accusations since the beginning of time to destroy a man and how women victimize themselves, falsely victimize themselves so that they can turn a man into a villain so that they can, they can either exact revenge on him. Yeah. Just like that. Uh, they, they just do it just cause like hell uh, that racist women and shit like that. Um, that black dude who got falsely accused of rape, great shit. I'm demonetized. But uh, that black dude who was locked up for what uh, he was a football player, and I think the girl like the like he 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 was feeling her, and I I don't think they was dating or whatnot, but she wouldn't be serious with him, and she like falsely accused him, and he lost everything. He lost everything. Or that one girl, uh, that dude in California, he uh got put behind bars for uh 10 10 12 years or something like that and he uh it's they turned it into a movie um the dude who played in straight out of compton not ice cubes uh son he was the tall dude who was supposed to be uh mc ren he played in the movie and he uh was a football player in high school and was like like one of the number one d1 prospects in california was gonna go he was going to like UCLA. Like all he had to do was like finish his studies. Like he was like his last month of school. He's gonna get everything. And this girl 
they got caught smashing by a teacher and the girl lied and said he uh you know yeah yeah and i was just like that story is so sad and like so day and day like you hear uh, so many stories of women doing that to men even i got accused like a female said that i came on to her you know what i'm saying just because i wouldn't date her but like she was like coming on to me and stuff and she wanted me to get in a relationship with her and i didn't want a relationship and it's just like but she was the one doing everything feeling on me wanting to be up on me all this extra stuff and i told her from the jump i want to look for no relationship or nothing and because i said that she started saying that like i forced myself on her luckily i didn't do anything and i ended the situation i saw where it was going and i um like told her to leave my house and stuff like you're not gonna tell me i was doing all that when you came home with me like you like and that's one of the reasons why i don't go like don't let girls come home with me after i dj and stuff like and that and what's crazy is that girl i knew her and the, all that and i don't even do that and the one time i did do is because i knew her i went to school with her me and her was already cool like we was tight as fuck and she she like i didn't necessarily know like she had a crush on me and this was like like we had was friends in school and stuff and then this was years later like i we had like we was at a friend's wedding like a mutual friend's wedding and i was the dj of that wedding and she came and hung out with me the whole time at the dj booth and then hung out with me that night and stuff and then did all that so it's just like you'll be surprised of how a female's emotion will flip and they want to get back at you and they'll say that stuff and then in the heat of the moment and they'll know it's a lie but they'll say that just to make you feel some type of way and don't let it be a spiteful female who like ain't don't don't ever hear no and stuff like that she then she tell somebody to bro crazy it's bro him so they can get some type of monetary gain so they can get sympathy attention there's a way to punish him so i don't know why they're they're talking about believe all women when through the course of history from the beginning of time women have used false accusations to destroy a man like they act like this is this is unheard of this is something that you don't know about so yes due process needs to happen and this is the thing that really gets me they protect the name of the victim the mm -hmm. supposed victim but they never protect the name of the man who a lot of times turns out to be a victim of a false accuser and they and then come to find out like say the the incident was false but because they already done spewed the hatred train and told the world that he still has to live with that accusation even though he's cleared even though he didn't do that like take um i know people don't like him but six nine like they said six nine was a a, a rapist and you know what i'm saying a, a penophile and he wasn't like he was uh he 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 wasn't like that he he was um he was it was his birthday so he was turning 18 and just because he was turning 18 they tried to label him as that when he wasn't that and the girl like if you look at like high school law or what is it like the the, the three-year law when you're in high school and like the girl can be 16 and you can be uh 18 because y'all was in high school together and you uh graduate and um say you graduate and you are 18 or you're 17 you turn 18 but you're still dating your girlfriend from high school and she's 16 and y'all do it like that's le that's legal but because like say y'all meet each other or something in that same instant and you do 17 you turn 18 they can say you are a penophile because you turned 18 but it was your birthday and stuff but they won't let the world know it was your birthday so they're gonna say you was 18 messing with a 16 year old and that's what happened to 6 9 and he come to find out he wasn't that but people are going to label him as that for the rest of his life because that's what the world's seen and that's what they spew. But they will never go back and backtrack and um, be like, no, nah, it, it didn't happen that way. We we lie. We're sorry. They will never clear for the man. They just going to keep the but they'll protect the female all day long.
It's but sad. that man will be destroyed, his reputation, his name, before he's had any due process. He will be destroyed just because of the accusation of the crime. Yep. When, even when a woman is proved to be a liar, that she lied, she made up those things, her identity is protected Thanks for the follow. I appreciate still. that. She's still seen as a victim that needs protection. I mean, the, the court system, the justice system, it's, it's not really a justice system. It, it is so backwards. It and ain't. It, it favors women. It, it favors women. And uh, uh, it favors uh, mayo plethoras of people. But if you're a black man and you, like, uh, go through something with the justice system, oh, bro, you better have God and the ancestors praying for you to get it out. In a way that is just, it is just, I see why so many men don't want to deal with a Western woman in any way. I mean, it makes sense. Because and that's another thing, too. I know I keep stopping the video. I'm sorry. But that's another thing, too, I'm starting to find out that, like, you only see this like people keep saying western women like why is it like you like this this whole like um new age of thinking and social media presence like it's only for like the western world like why did our side of the world get caught up in that and like the eastern side didn't like japan like just take japan for instance like and i say japan because i'm an anime dweeb and i'm like i'm in their culture really deep japan they have social media and stuff but they that's not their world like they still go out to parks and they still have social gatherings and they still watch tv they still have cable they still buy cds like we buy cds and stuff too but it's nowhere near what it used to be like everybody's went all digital digital this digital, digital everything like nobody owns anything in the united states anymore but in Japan, they still, if they want a game, they go to the store and buy. There's some, and the only games that they have digitally downloaded is like the games that only come out on Steam, that only come out digitally on the PlayStation. They still, and they still sit in the TV on Saturdays and Sundays to watch their Saturday morning cartoons. They still sit and watch like whatever the hype is show. Like, over here, we get it all at one bunch on Netflix. But over there, they will watch that shit as it come out on Sunday nights, 7.30 p.m. sharp. And they sit there and watch their favorite show. And it's, like, it's still big like that. But over here, we're all digitized. So it's, like, they have social media, but they don't feed into it. They know social media is fake. But over here, like, everybody thinks social media is so weird. Like, so it's real. And everybody's like wired and like just brainwashed. And it's so sad that like people live for social media now. It's so sad, bro. So sad. Women out here are they're they're vicious and they're they're tyrants, they're witches. And if they don't get their way, they try to enforce it through the courts, through the government systems, through universities, through corporations, and through by canceling men um for any little thing that they perceive as an infraction against their rights and their needs and who they are as a woman third question that i want to address that you didn't even ask so i'll address the first two and then there's a third one that i think is implicit in the first two so when it comes to sorry for stopping i don't know what wsg stand for in the chat i don't know what you was going for i'm not hip on all the acronyms <laughs> To standing up for due process, the answer is that we actually have to stand up for it, even in cases where it makes us uncomfortable, or even where we believe that the person may be responsible for something bad, because once you lose due process for one, you lose due process for everybody, obviously. Uh, when it comes to You're standing good. up for sexual assault survivors, I think the idea that we ought to take everybody's first account with the respect it deserves means not dismissing, not downplaying, but it also means asking the proper questions in order to get at the truth. That doesn't mean intimidating people. It doesn't mean calling people liars without evidence that they're lying. It doesn't mean mocking them, obviously, God forbid. It doesn't mean doing any of those things. Now, I've, I've, throughout the Christine Blasey Ford thing, I, kept, I keep saying over and over and over, I'm not calling her a liar. I'm not mocking her. I don't know if she's lying. I don't know if she's telling the truth. I don't know if she's misremembering. I don't know any of that stuff. All I know is the due process requires such and such to happen. Now, the, the real answer in the end to a lot of what's happening, and here's, here's the really unpopular part with the left. The left destroyed traditional mores with regard to relations between the sexes. Destroyed them wholesale. So the original idea was that men were supposed to act with honor and chivalry in protecting women, and women were supposed to 
look for, for example, relationships just as men were. Sexual activity was supposed to be confined, this was at least the ideal, was supposed to be confined to committed relationships, particularly marriage. Not everybody lived up to that, but a huge number of people did. In fact, once people got pregnant, people basically got married. There are studies from the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s shows an awful lot of seven month marriage babies, right? People who were sleeping together, getting pregnant, and then the couple gets married. When you don't teach men to protect women, you get men who will victimize women. And when you don't teach women that they ought to cherish men who are responsible and good, all you end up doing is incentivizing bad male behavior. And to piggyback off that, like, I hate that I'm even, like, agreeing with a portion of what he says because I do not like him as a person. But a lot of dudes have resentment towards women now. And a lot of dudes are emotionally unstable and we just know that from just history with like all kinds of things and the men who don't get something and get a taste of something and they fall in love with that they need it more to where they are they get it by any means and when i say by any means it's by any means and it's just like it's sad but and then they and then they learn patterns and women and stuff sometimes men if you look at certain uh serial people we're not gonna name them but they'll learn patterns and they'll learn ways to get you to go back home with them or sometimes they just they just follow you and wait to that to wait to that wednesday when they know you off work and you walk your dog at a certain time catch you slipping and they got you and it's just and that's sad but back in the ancient like i say ancient times but golden times like not really golden times but back before you know modern civilization from a young boy and that's still now today like your father teaches you that's your mother you protect her and you protect other women like her because you're a reflection of your your house and as a man you say what you mean and mean what you say and you are the protector like once i get old you're the head of the house you're the protector i grew up my father he taught me that off real my mom passed away and he still taught me to cherish women because we had what a sister growing up in the house so all of us knew what it meant to protect the female to do right by her and to treat her delicate because she's a female so in our head we would never like you know put our hands on a female and stuff like that but a lot of dudes don't have that luxury let alone a lot of dudes are resenting a lot of females especially at today's time with social media like you see them calling them all kinds of names and stuff and like a female can like you know granted a lot of them they could they can be b words and stuff like that but you don't know that through social media especially through a picture and stuff and so they get on the status and go ham and like look at facebook you see a lot of dudes just going off on women uh, going off on females arguing and stuff and because they resent females because they can't get them you know what i'm saying and it's sad it's sad as hell that like that's what the world has come to the feminist movement was not wrong when they said men are acting like pigs. They were wrong when they said women also ought to act like pigs and that this is a solution to our problem. Because I don't agree with that point that men are acting like pigs. Like, mm. I just think it's simplistic in his way to say something like that. I, I, it, it, that also goes back to like the, the top 2% of men that the, all the women are going after. Women are only going after the top 2% of men so those two percent of men are acting like pigs because they want those two percent of men to settle down and act right by all of those women and they're not going to do that history does not show that all these men were acting like pigs is it male nature to want sex yes but that doesn't mean that he does that mean he's a pig because biologically men are wired more for sex than women are no um so i don't know if he's just being facetious or hyperbolic with that statement but this is where I go back and forth a lot of times with a lot of these conservative people. They claim conservatism and they will defend men and be against feminism, but then they 
they still put down men in the same ways and don't really speak the truth on on on, on a man's true nature. All they yes, a lot of the tr atrocities that have happened in this world to women were done by bad men. But guess what? Good men, all the good things that have happened for women, all the justice that women have gotten, all the laws and all of the technology, all of the, the, the things that have helped women have happened from good men. Yes, there are bad men in this world, but it, it is to, to label men as pigs. You see where you see where that goes? And this is where I get confused with a lot of conservatives. They sound like liberals in the way that they label men. They have no problem with putting down men conservative or liberal now I, i'm not taking that statement as, as that's the whole of this argument that he's giving but was it really necessary i guess it's to please some of the feminists in there so they can listen to the rest of his point i'm not sure the reverse because now what's happened is they got rid of all the traditional mores about how sex ought to be connected with love and ought to be connected with relationships they got rid of all of that it was just a bodily function now except except when it comes to actual sexual assault we treat that differently than any other bodily function obviously but Th that's the problem, right? So they, they create the standard where sex is basically a throwaway item, sort of like eating. And then we treat sex very differently when it comes to what we all know it is, which is a deeply important and intimate part of a person's life. And then we attempt to backdoor standards of consent that frankly don't make any sense in a real life context. So you get college campuses in California saying that what you need is a yes means yes standard, where you have like a, first, like a legal checklist, I guess where every time you do anything in the bedroom, you're supposed to ask, am I allowed to touch your hand? Am I allowed to touch your shoulder? Am I allowed to touch your hair? Which has never ever resulted in actual fulfillment of a sexual encounter, right? I mean, it's just, it's, it's sort of like, it's like Zeno's paradox. If you have a yes means yes standard, the closer you get, the further away you are. And the, <laughs> the, the, the and, and again, sex is, uh, this is, this is where wi women really gave up on marriage a lot too soon. <laughs> Okay, marriage was the best thing ever for women. It is an amazing, th it's a, an amazing thing for men too because it civilizes them, it cultures them, it teaches them to be protectors of their family and to take care of people and to think beyond themselves and to think beyond their generation. Women gave up in marriage a way to teach men to do those things and also women gave up the idea that a commitment was going to come along with this intimacy and let's be real about this. I mean, every scientific study ever done has shown that women actually do have better sex in the context of committed relationships. All of the crap that you see in Cosmo magazine about sleeping with 100 guys and being sexually happy is just garbage. It is just sheer, unadulterated garbage. And actually, I have a video on my channel where it talks about, you know, the, the, the people who found it, uh, Cosmo, one of the, the women there, she actually confessed that it was all a lie. All these stories they were making up of women having all this great sex and empowerment and being feminist and living their best life in the city and having all these different men at their beck and call and, and being, promoting being single, it was all a lie. All of, it was done so that they can make money. And it was... Is that true? Like... Hey, put in the con like link somebody linked me or something like I did that if that if that's true, that's wild, bro. I only know about Cosmo because my fucking middle school band director she kept Cosmo magazines in her uh in the classroom. Wow, I don't fucking know, but uh the drum line when we wasn't well, the drummers like we sat in the back of the classroom where, while the magazines and stuff was there, and so. Uh, if we wasn't playing or so, or like say like that, she was working like with the different like sections and stuff. Us like we would like, and if we weren't playing, we would be sitting down. So we would like pick up her magazines and read through that stuff. It's some wild stuff they would be telling women to do, and it's and I still remember that shit. So and that was back in the early two thousand. So picture what Cosmo and shit is saying now. That's insane, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> And all of those women were actually married who were promoting anti, who were promoting anti-marriage at the time in this feminist stance. And, you know, I would say now, I would say the best sex is supposed to happen in marriage, but because women um, only see marriage as a way to control a man as to, as, as an achievement, they don't see it as a duty and an honor and a sacrifice as women of the old. Ma sex within marriage has now become a chore for most women because a lot of these women are still feminists in their heart even the conservative women and they see they have been indoctrinated by this poisonous mindset and they see sex within a marriage as unsatisfying because 
now we live in a sex crazed culture. The sexual liberation has 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 turned women into these to, into the pigs that he claimed that men are supposed to be because w there are more male virgins between 18 to 30 than there are female virgins okay and it's not because these men are bi the fact that it's that many male virgins bro they don't even know what it feels like bro that's crazy bottom dwell basement dwelling losers who are incels is because a lot of women are giving away sex to the top top five percent of men i would say the number moves around it's really it's but i would say the top guys the guys who have the six 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 over six feet make over six um figures and some people say six pack or or above six inches and so when you see these things and they have this fantasy life of being single and running the streets and the 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 that's crazy that they like fantasize over the devil numbers like that's how ingrained the devil is with the 666 bro that's just crazy like that's crazy damn that's kind of scary bro damn that's crazy and especially TikTok and social media, they see women getting so much attention and sexual attention and validation from men from the street. It's tempting. It's tempting for these women to want these things, to see these things as, as, as something that, 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 that I'm not getting. I just have my husband at home. And they feel unsatisfied. They feel unsatisfied with how much money the husband makes and how much he's doing because they make these comparisons to other people. They're not content. And so it all begins to make them resent their husband because he's not this, he's not that. And it's not what they truly want because their the hypergamy is actually taken over even within their marriage. And so even this is why a lot of men find that their wives aren't satisfied because they are actually hypergamous with their own husband. Like even though they're married and that should be the end of things and this is where you are, they still want more. And so sex now, and then a lot of men are going sexless. So all of this, it has destroyed marriage. Like feminism has destroyed sex within marriage, just what is supposed to be great. And so now this is the result. We see this, and, and this is why so many men do not want to get married anymore. And women should be celebrating. They wanted to be for the streets. They wanted to have body count. They wanted to sleep with whoever they want. They don't need a man. They're strong, independent. They make their own money. They're boss chicks. So now they can have that and leave men alone. Let them do what they want. Let them go to other countries, fly out, passport broke, to find women who are worthy of marriage, who want to be wives, and don't have this, this delusional feminist I ideology in, in, within them. And it's certainly... Uh, they don't want women like that to pass that poison on to their children. But guys, anyway, let me know what you think about this video. Leave a comment below. Also, make sure. Um, yep. That's sad. That's crazy. Uh, anyway, y'all know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. Keep it pushing. And, uh, if you're a virgin out there, boy, I feel sad for you. I'll holler at y'all later.